Welcome to Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, and I am here bringing you all the songs Uriah Heap recorded in the studio. If I can get my hands on it, we're going to do a review of it. That's how the show works. And today I've got a great song coming to you from the Sea of Light album. This is called Spirit of Freedom. Now, if you guys have been listening to this season, you know very well that every one of these songs has had a subtitle. The subtitle on this one is Realizing the New World. Very intriguing. You know, uh, I think again, back to the album cover, thinking like this is a whole new world that we've entered. Um, You know, maybe it relates to that. We're going to find out. And let's just dig right in today. What do you say? Here it is by your right. There is no time wasted on this song. Just jumping right in from the first note, Mick is already on to a solo feeling part. Uh, really interesting, too, because I'm hearing multiple guitar parts. So I'm hearing the, uh, you know, the low rhythm guitar uh, in my right ear. I think I'm also hearing it duplicated in my left ear as well or vice versa, but I'm hearing it a little more in my right. Then you've got that lead track that's playing slightly to the left and then that fourth harmony track that is going slightly to the right of that in spots. Sounds really good, though. Uh, Bass and drums sound great together. The keys are filling things in nicely. Uh, Really off to a good start. And I love, you know, I really thought that they were just going to change uh, parts and go in a different direction, but that was short-lived. And now they're going into another direction, uh, which is just, again, I've said it so many times, the transitions that this band comes up with are really spectacular. You know, what I really like about this sound is it's almost like hold your head up. You know, the guitars are in a much higher register than they would normally be during this part. Normally, you would want that bottom end, that distortion, filling everything out, really thickening up the sound and, you know, being nice and heavy. But these are real, like, you know, upper mid-range sounds. And it definitely adds a different dynamic. But we do have Trevor on bass filling things in very nicely. He's doing some little licks here and there that are really cool. Lee Kerslake is just playing really straightforward right now, and Phil is holding on the keyboards, just really making everything sound big and wide. The note progressions that Bernie is choosing here are very, very good. They're really interesting and unexpected. It really makes the vocals seem uh, alive and fresh and different. His voice sounds strong, but he's just going in directions that you wouldn't think the next note would be. Love that. Okay, so since Mick went to those lower notes on the guitar uh, that I would expect during that part, now that he's back into the verse again and playing those higher notes, now you can really feel the difference 
if you didn't notice it before, you should be able to feel it now. Uh, a, a much different spectrum of sound coming from the band. And, and it's really just this one thing that can make such a big impact on the song. But I like it. It's just, again, something that's kind of unexpected. You would think that at the very least, there would be another like a lower rhythm track and then these notes that he's playing in a more upper register. Very fascinating. As a drummer, those extended transitions are a little challenging sometimes to fill all that space, but they're also a lot of fun. You know, it gives you an opportunity to play something that you wouldn't normally play because you get longer time to do it and to build something in, in a fill that you don't normally have the time for. So it's pretty cool. And I love the way that Lee addresses these. He's done this, you know, throughout the span of Uriah Heep, uh, always just nails it with perfection. Love the addition of the backing vocals there. Sounds fantastic. Blends really nicely with the doubling that we've heard from Bernie up to this point. I got to tell you, though, I, I once again, I feel like there was a missed opportunity here because this song is a great theme. You know, it's a great theme for people in their lives. It would be a great theme for a country, you know, to to represent them and talk about just, you know, appreciating what you have around you and, and being strong and that sort of thing. Um, but this is really one that I feel could have been uh, just a great classic theme that could be played. I mean, all the elements are here. We've got really uplifting lyrics. We've got a beautiful, just beautiful delivery on the vocals. We've got great, rich, full music. I mean, everything is here. You can sing along to it. You can, you know, yeah, uh, what what do you call it when like uh, everybody puts their arms around each other and just kind of sways back and forth listening to the chorus? I mean, all the elements are there for unity, for hope for the future, for just just belief and and enjoying the moment. You know, it's all there. What a perfect solo for this song. I mean, it could not have been any better. It was exactly how this song felt, just summed up in a different way. I think it was perfect. And once again, furthering my feeling that this should be a theme song, because that's the kind of solo that, you know, if you're going to write a theme song, and I know that's not what they set out to do here, but if you are going to do that, or if you're going to pick one that's already written, you definitely want something that's not over the top, not flashy, has good emotion in it, makes you feel what the singer was making you feel without the singer being there and doing it in a very unique and elegant way. And that is exactly what we got out of Mick on this one. Kudos, great solo, and damn, this should be a theme song.
since in the last two minutes, no country has adopted this as a theme song, even though I've highly promoted it during the show. I think there's another thing that we can do with it. I think this is a great song to start your day with, right? To set the mood for what your day should be, to appreciate the things around you, to smile at things instead of frown at them, stop arguing about stupid shit and just enjoy what you have, you know, start over, look at the good things in your life and focus on those. That's what this song inspires in me. And I think this would be a great song to start your day with, you know, set the tone, do it right. So that's my challenge for you guys this week. Listen to this song in the morning, see how it makes you feel, see how it changes your day. Because I have a feeling that if you do it right, it absolutely will. But you can't just listen to it and then go, all right, now I hate this and that. I mean, like you got to stay in that moment, right? Not always the easiest thing to do. It takes a little practice. I don't expect you to do it all in a day. But even just changing something can make a big difference. So that's my challenge to you guys. Start your day with this song for the rest of the week and see how it makes you feel. I'd be curious to know if it changes things in your day, in your outlook, in your perspective, in the way that others view you during that time, in the way that you feel about other people during that time. Because that's really all it takes to change all that stuff is just a shift in your your outlook, right? So do that. That's that's what's going to happen this week, I think. That's what should happen this week anyway. So thank you guys for joining me for another episode. Wow, this actually turned out to be like a kind of a, you know, emotional episode for me because the song is so powerful. Um, I, I just love the message of it. And I hope you guys did too. I hope you enjoyed the music. Uh, fantastic work from everybody in the band. Perfect solos from Mick. Uh, just could not have asked for a single note more on this song. So thank you guys for joining me for this episode. We will be back on Thursday for another episode of the podcast. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.